All right, this I got to keep today uh, shorter than usual. You know, uh, I always enjoy rambling all night long with you guys if I could. Uh, but like I just mentioned, I got a couple of things I got to do. I leave everything last minute. All right, let me make sure everything's muted. All right. Um, yeah, I don't want to get too repetitive. I know, um, you know, we went over a lot of stuff on the uh, Sunday webinar kind of in, in preparation. <laughs> uh, kind of in preparation for um, what to keep an eye out this week. All right. And just to get everybody caught up, uh, some of you on, on Twitter who aren't members and so on, um, we kind of had a, a little window open here for, and again, everybody thinks in um, extreme moves, right? Everyone's focused on bottom or is the market going to crash? And we're kind of caught in between here, right? Um, you see us throw that, that picture out continuously with the tug of war that's going on. Uh, and that's pretty much, you know, that's pretty much what we're seeing uh, confirmed in the price action. So in other words, the tug of war is every time, um, you know, you get a rally and things look like they may follow through, you get bullish. Here you go. You got the Fed rigging the game, right? Credit spreads widen out, um, all tightening financial conditions, way on risk assets and way on equity prices, right? And every time you get some selling off of that, and the bears get excited. Um, you know, you just got a lot of bearish positioning out there. You know, there's just not a lot of money um, in equities anymore. Okay, now we're we're all waiting and and looking for again that c word capitulation where everybody just gets to a bearish extreme and is betting on further downside. We're not there yet either, but. At the same time, um, while they're not betting on further downside, they have no exposure uh, for, for any upside, right? So that's where you get um, this tug of war uh, in the price action, in the headlines, in everything, um, until something gives, right? Uh, or there's another you know exo exogenous event another force comes in and overpowers it but right now with we kind of know we kind of have an idea of what the fed is going to do here we kind of have an idea of uh, how inflation may react here over the short term you know we got a little bit of a window uh to where nothing should surprise the market and you're going to get the yank from both sides okay now it's easier said, you know, it's easier explained in words than when you see it in real time. And the reason being is, okay, we've been getting um, this tug of war price action yesterday and today, all right? But that doesn't mean that we have to stay in this little shindig here, right? This little consolidation here. This has been a pretty tight range for this volatile phase we're going through anyway, um, we can very easily, very easily, okay, uh, see a rally get out of this. And remember, we were talking about, it, right? Like you got some of the most more bearish guys out there think anything over 4,200, you got to be careful, lock in profit, right? And when you dip down near that 4,000 mark or under that, you want to look to be a buyer. Right, so kind of that range you want to use as a guide, um, but the in between is where we can get really frustrated, right? Um, and my advice, and it's been you know popular advice from me throughout this this whole correction or bear market, whatever it is, um, is just to be more nimble, right? So in other words, what I mean by that is we are not at four thousand or under four thousand here, right? So you don't get that ideal entry where you get a tactical sentiment lined up um, and, and you get that little window uh, of a decent risk reward entry. So when we see sweeper activity into weakness, like we were seeing this morning, um, and you're at a bottom of a range, you know, that's something you want to trade, right? And a lot of us are doing it on an intraday uh, as far as time frame is concerned anyway. Right, so it's about knowing your, your, your time frame as well, right? If you're playing intraday, you can be more active, right? There's less risk. You can manage your risk uh, a lot more efficiently intraday. 
if you have any inclination, any desire to hold overnight, there you're going to be a little more patient. You know, you're going to be a little more patient. You got to be willing to take some, um, some paper cuts or stay looser along the way. All right. But that being said, um, it's really hard right now to see anything drastic happen as far as a change in climate. Okay. Cause of all the reasons that we've been talking about ad nauseum uh, for the past few weeks, right? So you got the Fed rigging the game up here. And every time uh, bulls get excited, right? That's the last thing they want. They got to tighten financial conditions. They got to try to keep a lid on things. That's the only shot they have of taming inflation. So when bulls get excited, they're going to work their magic and try to keep things back and put things back in check, right? And then at the same time, because of um, the bearishness out there, because of the lack of exposure out there, you're likely going to find buyers and there's going to be a bid down in this neck of the woods, right? And, you know, somebody, I forgot who it was, but somebody I, I follow, uh, I think it was some brokerage house or something, uh, said it best. We don't have the Fed... We don't necessarily have a Fed put uh, set up anymore. We don't just have that Fed sell call set up anymore. We have the Fed straddle, right? To where kind of where they keep us in the range here. Um, you know, again, for I don't want to say the short term, but the foreseeable future until we start to see uh, some things change. Okay. And, you know, the other thing you got to understand, guys, like we, we talk about the exposure, right? Hedge funds, they have no exposure. CTAs, they have no exposure. Risk parity funds, vol control funds, systematic funds. Nobody has any exposure to equities, okay? As you see your market pick up some momentum, you're going to see these guys put some exposure back on, right? And that's what gives. That's what's going to give. So in other words, you go from a stance where nobody has any equity exposure Everybody thinks this is a bear market rally, right? If you ask everybody out there, everybody thinks this is a bear market rally. Nobody thinks this um, has a shot of being the start of a, a bottom, right? Nobody, okay? And even if that's the case, we talk about that all the time, right? Even if that's going to be the case, that this is not going to be the low, all right? The market is not gonna make it that easy for every player to benefit out there, right? They're gonna make them pull their hair out of their head until they give in and then they'll go and make new lows, right? We see it time and time again. So that's what we got. What you're gonna to start to see either um, everybody try to short this rally because they think it's a bear market rally and they think that it doesn't have much lasting power, right? Then it's gonna shift. That's gonna be the bullish case. The bearish case would be that people start to believe in the rally or believe the lows are in, um, and then that opens up the window for the bears, right? So in simple English, uh, that's kind of where we're at. Uh, anybody have any questions on that? Everybody um, pretty much understands that, right? It's not too complicated. What is this? Oh. Let me get the... Do I have the chat open here? Somebody types up. Oh, there we go. Hold on. Oh, I'm upside down. All right. There we go. All right. So here's just, um, again, so you guys could see what we're talking about here, right? So these are, uh, this is the CDX indicator, credit default swaps. Uh, and we've been talking about how you know, price action and this indicator mirror image, right? The adverse of uh, what this indicator is doing, price action is doing. And see, we, we have a little bit of a window here like we had here. Yes, this updates daily. 
Uh, so we have a little bit of a window uh, here like we did the prior bear market rally, all right, uh, to where we can get, I wouldn't, because we already had a decent move off the low. So, you know, that's the tough part, right? That's the tough part of this market in general, trying to put a number on the upside or, you know, it, it all depends. You know, it can, I think it could, it could be a bigger move than a lot of us expect, or it can be, you know, even less so. I think it all depends on, do they, do they get some of this non-believer money on the sidelines to put some exposure back on, right? Do they get that FOMO and not in a big way, but just players putting on some of that de-risking that they've been doing uh, throughout this whole process, right? Because everybody took off equity exposure here. This whole grind lower, okay? Now you get that squeeze, okay, where shorts get squeezed. Now, do they get some of these players who were selling on the way down to put some of that back on? And depending on how much they put back on, um, that creates a bid, right? So... Again, not to get too technical, I think you we just we have a, a window of bullish momentum um, going into probably next week, maybe even a little bit um, beyond expiration week, right? Next week's expiration week, right? Yeah. Um, so we got a little bit of a, a bullish momentum, right, over the next week or so, uh, past expiration, and the the best way to take advantage of that is to try to utilize days like yesterday. Okay. And look for entries. And again, it doesn't have to be swing trades, right? The, the day trade has been the, the best trade out there in this market, right? Less amount of risk. Obviously you don't have the upside, but you don't have to worry about, you can utilize stops, etc. cetera. Um, today, for those of you who are members, today is exactly what we, how you want it to line up, okay? You come in, you got mark the market down, right? Here's the difference. Yesterday, you had a rally, okay, off the open. Put the call ratios, got smoked, right? You had nothing but risk chasing that rally, right? You had to chase green, and you had to chase it into hot sentiment, right? People were buying calls, they were unwinding puts, so you were doing what everybody else was doing if you were doing that. Now, fast forward to this morning. You get selling off the open, right? Futures are down, market gaps lower. Um, put the call ratios start to rebound from low, from low points yesterday. And we start to see some sweeper activity that didn't come in yesterday at all. They wanted nothing to do with that rally yesterday. We saw some sweeper activity come into weakness today. Right. And there was a healthy pace behind the buying today. Right. So that adds to the momentum. Right. So you want you look for an opportunity into that. Right. Whether it's the index at the index level, individual names. I'm focused more on individual names um, right now than anything else. Uh, but I'll play the index, you know, if it lines up. And in case closed. Right. So now, for example, tomorrow, um, you know, we want to see weakness. We don't want to chase green. We don't want to chase green um, and get too carried away here. Because again, we got to remind ourselves that you know, the Fed is rigging the game, right? The Fed is rigging the game. So they're trying to keep a lid on things. We want to take advantage of the, the bearish side of that sentiment equation uh, where players don't have much equity exposure. And when things sell off, there's people more inclined to, to do some buying, right? And the, we have the, the sweeper activity, even though it's, you know, not really worthy of swing trades these days, that's where it can be a, a real asset. It could be a real asset. Because when you see that rapid fire, healthy pace behind the sweeper buying, right? You know, there's a bit in the market, you know, there's momentum. If like yesterday, Every attempt out of a at a bounce yesterday when the market was fading, right? There was no there was no call sweeper activity at all. They were actually buying puts into those into those attempted rallies, right? All day yesterday. So right, and today 
you had some healthy bets uh, flying around out there, granted in energy and some of the material space again. Um, it's amazing some of these energy stocks, though. They get bombed. All right, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Spy puts. Those spy puts, they flipped yesterday. They flipped them. They day traded them. You know what I mean? So think about that. We're seeing monsters day trade options intraday. Yeah, ten million dollar day trades. Like, and we want to, you know, we want to try to swing trade in this mess. You know, nobody's nobody's doing it. You know, they, nobody's doing it. And all you got to say to yourself is the Fed's ringing the game, and and that's the reason why. Now. But that being said, again, I got to keep reminding myself and all of you guys out there, as bearish as that sounds, I, I think we are closer to opportunities in individual names. It may not come in the names you like, but you know we forget that we've already been seeing that, right? We've been seeing it in commodities all year long. Um, we're still seeing it in energy, right? So when that buying does show up in some new spots, um, there, there's going to be, there's going to be some stuff to play. I think everyone gets fixated on, you know, the apples, the Amazons, uh, all those names. And in these conditions, that's a tough cookie. GameStop. That's a tough cookie. You know, that's a tough cookie. Those names. There's too many, there's too many hands involved. You know, there's too many hands involved. And, and we see it all the time, right? Like I'll give you an example. Um, what was it? Amazon. Amazon, they were sweeping calls uh, yesterday morning, I think it was, off the split. Then they were sweeping puts, right, in the afternoon. Now, granted, a lot of you who are really active are okay with that because you guys like to trade. But the majority of you are not going to flip um, an Amazon when it's running intraday, you know, you, that greed's going to take over. You're going to try to catch a decent move out of it. And now all of a sudden they're sweeping puts while you're holding the bag. And we're seeing a lot of that action in all these things, in all those names, all those names, you know? So it's not, not the time. You don't want to, you don't want to buy those. You know? And like I said, the energy names, they're, they're great, but they, it's not new anymore, you know? It's not new. Like, look, we, we saw sweeper activity in this AR again today. You know what I mean? These, these are not new names. They didn't just start buying these things. I mean, look at these moves. Now, what they're starting, what they've been doing, they didn't just start today, but remember we were talking about they were attacking the, the underbelly of, of these sectors now, right? So they're attacking the cheaper the more speculative names, like this one, SWN, they've been buying. Look at this thing, right? Um, uh, NOVs, right? So they're going under the hood and they're hitting a different batch now. But as they do that, you're getting closer to a pause in that move. You know, it's not the start of the move. You understand? It doesn't have to be the, the very end of it, um, but it's not the beginning of it. And, you know, you, you never want to get caught. Then you could trade them, trade them. You know what I mean? Trade them. You see Oxy is down on the day, and all of a sudden, they again, they're coming in, sweeping Oxy weeklies. Buy Oxy for a day trade. No doubt about it. I'm not telling anybody not to. There are a ton of momentum in these names. You know what I mean? It's just, if you're going to start a, a new position in Oxy, and you probably already played it at least once before somewhere down here, right? If you're going to start a new position in Oxy up here, you know, your risk rewards, are, it's a whole different ball game. It's a whole different ball game. So that, that's, that's the issue with these things. But we can trade them till, you know, you can trade them all day long, all cerebral activity, all day long. You know, the moves are going to get tighter and tighter. They're not going to be as big obviously, but you can day trade them. I'm talking about, like, look at XLR, look at this thing. My God. 
hell of a move in these things. Hell of a move. You know? Yeah, that, that's what I mean. Now, Kramer hated these oil names when they started catching flow. He hated them. He said oil was, un- you can't invest in oil. You can't play them. You can't touch them. And that's where we started seeing sweepers, boom, 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 coming in left and right. Now, these guys are, are hopping on the bandwagon. Right, remember? So now everybody's hopping on the bandwagon. You don't want to get you don't want to get caught in these things. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't want to get caught. It's okay to be nimble, but understand this is not early anymore. Yeah, exactly. They would abuse me when I posted a sweep about an energy name on Twitter, calling me boomer and everything else, right? Exactly. So it is what it is, right? You remember they used to try to abuse me for who oh, Exxon Mobil? Oh, who, who's uh, who buys Exxon Mobil anymore these days? That's what they were telling me on Twitter. Incredible. And yeah, that's what they said. My grandfather bought Exxon Mobil. Um, so again, these don't have to be over. This could be a super cycle, like some are calling for, right? Like Kalanovich and those, I have no idea. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a breather, right? You're gonna get a breather. It's gonna shake out some of the jabronis hopping in now, these latecomers, they're gonna spit them out, right? And then you'll have, you know, what's his name said it best. Remember we were talking about that on here? Um, the guy, uh, the trader on CNBC who comes on talking about nat gas and oil a lot of times, um, but he said, the next best entry in these energy related names, okay, is most likely when you get a ceasefire, whatever that may be, in Ukraine. Because they're going to get killed, right? That week, they're going to get beaten to hell. Everyone's going to puke them out. And if you believe in this commodity shift super cycle, right, that's as good as the entry as you're going to find. So, you understand that's nobody's gonna want them, everyone's gonna get out of them, and that's where you want to get in. But right now, you gotta be you gotta be careful. As good as they look, I listen, they they look great, they catch the best looking sweeper activity out there right now. So I don't have a bad thing to say, but you know, just like the growth stocks when they get crowded, you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful for a pause. You know, and a, and listen, when you're playing calls, there's no difference between a crash and just sideways consolidation. Right, you lose all your money. Right, there's no difference, so they don't have to crash. All they got to do is go dead, and you lose your money. So for those of you who are option players, you know, you got to be a little more uh, picky. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. Um, what else did I want to share with you guys? Because um, I don't want to keep it short. Anybody have any questions on on anything um, we talked about here? All right. So there was a, a note, I think Zero Hedge had a nice write-up on it too. Uh, the Goldman guy we were talking about, right? Uh, oh. All right. So, you know, these, these are a couple of things to keep an eye on here, right? We spoke about this Sunday. Um, just confirm this little bullish window. What do I, I got to find a better uh, little nickname for it, you know? The, the window of uh, bullish momentum. Yeah, you know, we got a little, little pocket, a pocket, that's it. A little pocket of bullish, uh, bullish momentum. Our Sharpies are bullish. Sharpies have no hedges on. Uh, Riff Raff, are, they're short. Uh, so again, that's another thing, right? That's another thing where the probability is we these lows should hold for a bit. The upside, see, here's the thing, Tenor. The problem is here, right? Like, for example, if, if we didn't have the Fed doing what they are doing, I'm more than likely, I'm... Well, they're not even sweeping anything. But 
I'd be more inclined to get long and for to play something here. Okay. Because the way I would look at it is the probability of that substantial downside is a lot less right now. And you got no exposure on institutionally. So that's your upside. Okay. The, the pickle here, right? The thing that gets in the way of that thesis is you have a Fed rigging the game. Okay, the Fed is rigging the game. That's the problem. You understand? So now, if you were going to get long, and again, I'm not talking about a trade. You get long for a trade, it's worth it. I think it's worth it. But anything beyond that, I don't think it's worth it, right? If you were to get long in any aggressive way here, okay, you're buying into the Fed rigging the game to the downside. So stop and think about that for a second, all right? That's the problem here, okay? There, on the positioning side, there is enough bullishness out there, right? Enough people are bearish out there that you can make a bullish case to, to be a buyer here, no doubt. I'm being that straight with you guys. I don't care how bearish people are out there. You know, when you got everybody and their mother calling a rally, a bear market rally, okay? Chances are the market is gonna make them believers one way or the other, okay? We've seen it coming out of the COVID lows, right? We've seen it coming out of COVID. The difference, the Fed threw in the kitchen sink off the COVID lows and rigged the game to the upside. Now they're rigging the game to the downside. You understand? That's a big difference. A big difference. All right. So the upside is it's really hard to make a case for legitimate upside here. Okay. And that's why you got guys like, you know, Bova, Hart, uh, Hartnett out of Bova, who's been money and his own indicator, the bull bear indicator, screaming bullish. Right. But he can't even be bullish. He thinks that the market will probably hold here, but you got to be a seller for anything over 4,200. And if you're looking to short, you know, you look around 4,400 to do that because the Fed's rigging the game. And, and the problem with that is besides the Fed rigging the game, they have no choice but to rig the game. Do you understand? They have no choice. They have to rig the game to the downside. They have to. They have to, right? They got to slow down the economy. They got to slow down the jobs market. Right? They got to drain liquidity. They, they have to do all that. There's no choice in the matter. So th that's the problem, right? That's the problem at the index level right now. Amar, right? Listen to me. And I, I agree with what you're saying, right? But where do they kill the stock market? Where? Well, the stock market's not killed. They're doing, right now, they're doing an impeccable job. Impeccable job, okay? And if you're saying, if you, maybe you misspoke and didn't want to use the word kill, because they're not killing anything, Okay. Why do they want the stock market not to go higher? Maybe that's what you're asking. Because this was all artificial. If it wasn't for the Fed, you wouldn't have got any, you wouldn't have got any of this. Okay? So they did this to save the economy, right? There was a global economic shutdown like we've never seen before. All right, so they had to rig the game in a big way. Now, this is the result of that, okay? Now the economy is on footing. People have jobs. People aren't locked in their homes anymore. The economy is open, right? They have to unwind or attempt to unwind that. And what's going on here, this, okay? If this continues, you're going to see Powell on the cover of Forbes, or time man of the year. 
Okay. He didn't kill anything. He didn't kill anything. If this continues, okay, if th the way things are going here, orderly like this, all the way down, all kidding aside, to 3,000 even, without anything breaking, he should go on the cover of Time Magazine as Man of the Year. Okay? Because he saved the economy on the brink again, and he drained liquidity without breaking anything, and fair value is what? 3,000, 3,500 SPX? Exactly in the middle? You offer him that, he'll take that right now. You take that right now. The economy is not broken, Jim. Where is it broken? Where? Maybe you see something I don't. I don't know. Tell me where. If the economy was broken, he'd stop. And he'll be cutting rates. Tell me what's broken, what you guys think is broken. Yeah, but I, I'm saying that's that's what he's trying to fix now, right? That's what he's trying. To, here's the thing: you can't. We can't have it both ways. I know the bears on on Twitter and the Fed bashers on Twitter. You know they're going to take shots at the Fed no matter what. You can't have it both ways, okay? Should the Fed have done what it did into the COVID lows? Everybody would say yes to that, right? Okay. The only argument you're going to make is they should have started the process earlier, right? What do you think? This wasn't going to happen? You think that we were not going to go through a rough patch when they, if they started the process earlier? Yeah, but it's easy to be Monday morning quarterbacks now and say, oh, yeah, they should have done this, they should have done that. They, yeah, now that we know the results. But I'm saying they... The only argument you can make is they, they should have started um, unwinding earlier, right? But think about what was going on. You had another round of COVID, right? You remember all that shit? Lockdown, talk again, China locking down. It wasn't that easy. It wasn't that easy. You know, again, now we look at it, yeah, of course. Right? And listen, there were a lot of people who were saying inflation wasn't transitory, but there were a lot of people saying infl inflation was transitory, right? And even guys like me, who've been from 2009 hearing the threat of inflation for over a decade, didn't believe that it was a lock to be inflationary, okay? It ended up being inflationary. So now they're dealing with it, right? But let's let's see what happens here right let's see what happens and i'm not saying jim something is eventually is not going to break every time they've attempted to do this something breaks you understand the track record's pretty poor when they unwind and drain liquidity but right now nothing they'll take this in a heartbeat what they see right now right now everything they wanted everything they wanted is happening in, some inflation is stalling, right? Some, you take oil and gas and, and that out of the equation, okay? The economic conditions are tightening, right? Risk assets have calmed down, right? You're getting uh, uh, NFTs and all that shit, money getting you know yanked out of there. You got a lot of stuff um, that they wanted to happen and needed to happen that's starting to happen. Jarred farts. Now they're they're selling jarred sweat. At least they moved on, right? They're moving on to right to a different uh, sector. <laughs> Boob sweat. You know what I mean? Um, but listen, if you are bold, you want it to get violent, and you you want something to break because then it's over. You understand? It's going to be ugly, but then it's over, right? If you're a bull. Even a bear, I'm not going to lie to you, even a bear, what we're going on, what's going on right now is the worst case scenario because it's so difficult to make any decent score in this mess. Yeah, yeah, you just, you got to be really, really nimble. You got to look at this, this environment right now like 
you're betting bowl games and you have a little edge. Okay. You're betting 10 bowl games this week and you're hoping to win six, seven of 10 of them. You understand? And you make some money. That's the way you got to look at this environment right now. Otherwise you got, you can't do anything. You got to be patient and wait it out. Okay. But if you can make a little bit of money while you're waiting through this, while you're getting through this, that's the best case scenario for you. And being able to take advantage of whenever things loosen up, you know, and that's being bullish and bearish. You know, I'm being dead straight with you. You guys know, you know, I don't play the bear side at all. Right. Cause I, I feel it's so difficult, but you know, right now, I think both sides here, it's just as tough for both sides because of what we spoke about at the beginning of the, of the webinar, because of that tug of war set up, it's really difficult for both sides. You know, but if you're nimble, you can make and not greedy. You can be, you can come out of this profitable. Okay. You're not going to come out doing cartwheels, but you can come out net, net profitable. And listen, one way or the other, you guys are going to learn, right? That the last couple of years, right, those are the best of times. They're not always around and they're rarely around. There's a lot more of times like this where you got to grind it out and survive and try to make a little bit of money to wait for that better opportunity. That's what this game's all about. It's not about, you know, everybody comes into the game thinking there's a way to make a lot of money all the time, right? Or well, maybe somebody I can find that picks nothing but winners in every market. There's no, there's no fucking such thing. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. What you want to do is you want to survive, grind it out, make a couple shekels, and then when we get into one of those pockets, right? Similar to what we had last year. I mean, the last couple of years that went on a couple of years, right? They're not going to go on a couple of years. They go on a couple months and you want to be able to hit that hard, right? That pocket where things line up and you got some momentum, you got some flow, you got everything. Okay. When it's tough like this, you just want to survive, man. You just want to survive, you know? Yeah, you want to try to come out of it, make a little bit of money, but you got to understand it's just you're not you're not going to get rich in in these type of environments. Don't don't listen to these pikers on Fintwit. They don't know what they're talking about. They have no idea what they're talking about. They have no idea what they're talking about. Praveen, we. The, Trust me, just as much as you, I would, I would love to forecast the when. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. It can come when you least expect it. You have no idea. You know what I mean? That's the beauty of this market, right? It's impossible to forecast so far out what's going to happen. There's a million different things that could happen. A million different things. You could get a ceasefire in Ukraine. You know what I mean? kills inflation and overdoes it. And now the Fed is talking about cutting rates. And just like that, you have a completely different environment. You understand? Things change in the snap of a finger. Like look at, look at what we had just seen right here, you know? You know, you can have one ugly week where things look like they're falling apart economically, the fundamentals are falling off a cliff, right? Oh, nothing but bearish news. And it looks like the market's done forever. And that could be it. You know what I mean? That could be the end. So that, that's the beauty of the game. You just, that's why I tell you in these times, it's worth breaking even, okay? Most people are going to tell you, walk away. The reason why I wouldn't recommend you walk away, take time off and all that shit is because you have to stay involved, right? You have to be ready. You got to look for those, the clues and the signs and be around when things turn. If you're away in 
Cancun and took a hiatus, right? One, if it happens when you're on the hiatus, you'll have no idea. What, are you just going to come back to the desk and be all bullish without knowing what the hell went on? You know what I mean? Especially after a rally. You got to... It's part of the game, for me anyway, my opinion. It's a big part of the game being able to sit in front of the computer, sit in front of the quotes, and when there's not a lot to do, you don't do a lot. You have to get a handle on that. Somehow, whether it's staying in cash or playing really small, exactly, size down. You know what I mean? And do it for entertainment purposes only. But you have to stay involved. You have to stay entertained and, and not, you know, not build a bias off of anything else. So you could you could have a clear mind, a clear head, and see what's going on. You know, like I get I get labeled a perma bull, right? Everybody calls, but you know, I'm a I'm a realist. When 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 things look shitty out there, right? I, I I don't just pretend to be a bull and just keep buying until I run out of money. You know what I mean? I know I got to wait. I'm still going to play. I'm still going to grind it out, try to make a little bit of money. But that's my process behind waiting, you know, being patient. Yeah, you do it. There's all revenge trading. It's you go down a slippery slope when you start doing that shit. A slippery slope. Um, anyway, we revisit the lows. Yeah, I mean, we could revisit the lows without a doubt. I just think that um, because of uh, the way things are lined up right now, that you you need you would need something to go boom for it. I am a permable. You're right. Um, that's actually a compliment, right, Troy? I got to remember that. You would need something to go boom for for it to break, in my opinion, right now right now you know it's of course it's possible but you know you would need something to break right you would you would need the fed to actually break something uh in the process here uh, and like i said you know the stuff that we look at right there are some stuff to keep an eye on things right to get a gauge on things um and the stuff's not showing that right now right the stuff's not showing that. You got actually inflows coming into the market, right? So they, they put a little bit of a bid over the short term, okay? Um, expiration, right? It's going to put a little bit of a bid. You got a lot of puts that are going to expire, all right? That's going to put a bid um, underneath. Uh, and more importantly, the day-to-day -day stuff, like uh, the stuff we looked at here, right? Like... Put it this way, uh, who, Italian chef, okay? If we were going to go to new lows, in my opinion, you're going to see this go to new highs. You understand? Okay, so like here, okay? We took a breather. Oop, yeah, nice square. That's a nice square, All right? And then you see how this set it off? Every night now, Tree, every night, unless it's a flat day. Like, yeah, I don't think I posted it yesterday because there was no nothing going on yesterday. It didn't move. Every day, every day, yeah, every day. And, you know, you know, T, we never used to look at this because in a normal market, you don't, uh, whatchamacallit, this doesn't matter in the normal market. You know, that's why we've been talking about this so so much now. In this market, it's probably the most important thing. Like, look at this. You know what I mean? And again, it's not voodoo, right? The Fed, when you hear the term, they're tightening financial conditions. That's, this happens, okay? You hear out there that the Fed, they're tightening financial conditions. This is what is the process behind that. You know what I mean? This was the process behind it. No, the, the bottom's not in. What do you mean the bottom's in? I don't know if the bottom's in. 
this thing can shoot to new highs next week and the bottom's not in. What happened here, it gave, like we're saying, it gave a little window here of bullish momentum instead of every rally being sold, right? Now that goes away for a little period of time. All right, very similar to here. Look, okay, you see how this is going higher? Every rally, seller, 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 seller. Like for the bottom to be in the all clear sign, and I don't, I don't think it's possible because the Fed, I, I don't think would allow it. But in the past, this would do this. Okay, and the reason it did that, it would crash, is because the Fed would do QE, and that was the bottom. You understand? QE does this. QT does this. You know? Yeah, listen, I, I know it can get confusing, you know, especially for, for a lot of you who don't um, enjoy this stuff. Like, you know, I don't know, I'm almost embarrassed to say I, like I enjoy following this stuff. You know what I mean? But um, this is, you know, in a bull market, you don't have to worry about this stuff. It's irrelevant. In a bull market, you'll never see me look at this chart ever, ever. Because the credit, this, this indicator is going to be low and stay low. You know what I mean? So we, we, we would never talk about this. You only talk about this when the Fed is rigging the game on the other way, right? So you only, or you get those uh, crazy markets like 2008. If I showed you a chart of this back in 2008, you got to see where this thing went off the screen. That's how high it went in 2008. You know, um, 2018, I think a little higher than this, right? Into the late 2018, COVID went higher. But you know, those are those are big events. Those are big events. So yeah, right now, listen. For the majority of you, got to you got to stay patient. And again, I. Everybody's on different time frames, right? If you can be really nimble, you have to be really nimble here. I don't know any, you know, how a better way to explain it. Okay. You cannot get FOMO here. Okay. Even if the market goes higher than where you sell it, you can't have FOMO right now. Okay. Because you have the Fed against you. You have the Fed rigging the game against you right now. You can't have FOMO. You can't. So what you got to do is you got to look to buy weakness. And for us, right, members, you got to look to buy weakness when there's call sweeper activity and you got favorable sentiment, right? And sell the rip. Case closed, okay? You today, you had an easy trade without even, it, it wasn't without even sweating it, all kidding aside, right? We talked about it someday. Okay, this market ripped even more so later in the day, but you had a clean red to green trade this morning. Okay, in one shot, red to green, and you could have cashed your ticket and been done for the week. That, that, that was your setup. Now, for those of you who say, well, that's not enough, then I got news for you. You're in big trouble because you better, you better, you better make it enough. Otherwise, you're going to make donations. And if you rather lose than make a little bit of money, you know, but that's it, right? And, and here's why, okay? Again, like yesterday, you had a, a market rally green and sentiment wasn't favorable. There was no sweeper activity, okay? Even if there was sweeper activity, you didn't want it, right? You're chasing green into a Fed rigging and sentiment was against you. Okay, we walk in this morning and a beautiful thing happened. The market sold off overnight, right? So now you got more favorable sentiment, right? It's not a concern anymore. And now you're looking for any signs of sweeper activity for an entry. 
That's it. You don't want to uh, overthink things, okay? You get in wherever you find that entry, right? It's into red. You're not chasing green. Stay a little loose, whatever you got to do so you don't get stopped out in the tick, okay? If you don't get that bounce and it continues to melt, you get stopped out, you got to lose it, right? If not, you gotta, you're looking for red to green. Does it every day, red to green. And it did it right here. This, this, this move here, it did it right there, All right? Right over here. So here was the open in that neighborhood. And here was the rip to green. Now, you know, again, you had a dip and then you had another bigger move after that. But honestly, I didn't hold through all that. I played this. And then I got in the middle of a couple of those energy names here, but I didn't, I didn't play the, the, the rally. Yeah. And, and these are the days, Praveen, these are the days you, we gotta, we gotta do that, you know, and, and that's, that's the best risk reward trade on the board right now. That's it. That's the best risk reward trade on the board right now. There's, there's nothing else. Okay, like for example, look, okay, market looked good today, right? Even the flow looked a lot better than yesterday, okay? You think maybe there'll be some follow through tomorrow. You got the CPI tomorrow, okay? So you could come in and the futures could be down 50. All right? And now not only do you not have a profit, you lost all your money, all right? You can't stop yourself out, you can't do anything. That's the market you're in. I mean, it's obvious, guys. It's obvious. You don't need to, uh, you don't need my uh, 25 year, oh, shit. you don't need my 25 year experience to realize that. This is obvious stuff. No? I don't know. Is anybody else? Is it easy money out there? You guys have something else? Wait, tomorrow is Wednesday, right? CPI Friday? CPI is on Friday? Wow. What the hell is it on a Friday? Anyway, whatever. Market could gap down on anything. Really? Friday? Why went to CPI on Friday? That's the first time I've ever. Jesus. So, but, you know, and, and listen, you get, you get selling tomorrow, right? You get like, look, okay, let's say we're, we're in this here, right? You get uh, some selling tomorrow off the open, like today, all right? And we go down here again, okay? And you got, oh, you got the ECB too. You got something every day in this market. Um, and you see some sweeper activity, just like today, coming in, playing for a squeeze, you play for a squeeze. You know what I mean? You play for a squeeze. That's it. So unless you, you want to roll the dice, right? And you buy a pullback, you roll the dice. But I mean, what do you, like, again, 4,400, say, best case scenario. You know what I mean? You kind of want to, if you're going to buy anything, you kind of got to sell it in, in this neck of the woods here. But if you, you know, if you're looking to, if you need to swing trade and you want to roll the dice um, off an entry off a weakness, it's, I mean, it's not the worst thing. It's only going to be a loser. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I would just use it for a trade. It's, you can't get cocky here. You know what I mean? You can't get cocky here. Like, look what this, um, oh, I don't think I titled it or I did, wait, oh. Right. You know, no matter what, no matter how you look at it, the Fed's got more work to do. You know what I mean? This, this can't be over. Oh, this is from May 30. Oh, well, we're in the same spot. So here's what the Fed's doing here, right? Like these are spreads. This is what we look at, right? 
Okay, that's the indicator of the credit default swaps, very similar. Look at this, M3, the blue, that's money supply. It's going the opposite direction of where you would go when they're pumping liquidity. You know, so you, you got the wind against you here. You got the wind against you, right? Look, here's what we were buying into the last couple of years, right? Financial conditions, easy peasy. Now, look at this, okay? See this? This is late 2018, the last time there was a debacle, okay? The Fed is tightening conditions. You see it right here. It's right in front of us. I, I My opinion, and you got guys like um, Charlie McElliott, and a lot of other guys, um, the reason vol is suppressed is because nobody has any exposure. You understand? Everybody who needed to be hedged or de-risked already has done so. You understand? It's not like this was bang, 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 and you had to scramble for hedging, okay? You had a lot of time to be lathered in hedges here, okay? So unless you're playing for a crash, right? Unless you believe there's substantial downside from here, people don't have interest in chasing VIX. And that's why every time you get to the top of the range there, you get that VIX unwind, you know, right here, right? Every time you get to the top of the range, you get the other one, right? So what I was saying earlier, like, for example, late 2018, which this is, remember, we were looking at that analog, that's gone, okay? It's, this is not late 2018 anymore. But in late 2018, you did this, and at the end, you popped through it where people thought a crash was coming. They aggressively bought VIX. And that was capitulation, and you had a, bo um, a bottom. You know, now you don't have that. Every time VIX gets here, players want to be a seller. And when VIX gets down here, they want to be a buyer. And that's what's going on with, with VIX. Again, it all comes to, for me, it all comes to positioning. Okay. Nobody has, nobody owns any stock. Everybody is out of equities. The only ones left are the passive in fund flow investor. That's the only one left with, with exposure. All the um, institutional professional side, they're done. They have nothing. Like anyone, anything you wanna look at, you wanna look at CTAs? I don't, look, okay. This is CTAs when they're loaded. They're neck short, no exposure, neck short. You understand? Okay. Hedge funds, right? We look at them constantly. Zero. Okay. Hedge funds, believe it or not, are totally hedged. They're not net long or short in a major way. You understand? So here, here's the here's the, the, the problem you have here. You know what I mean? Here's the problem you have. Again, this, if you put a gun to my head or you asked me to make a bullish or a bearish case out of this, I, it would be bullish, right? Because they own nothing. And if they need to own something, that's buying that needs to come in, okay? But we still have the Fed rigging the game. You understand? That, again, it all comes back to that. If the Fed's not rigging the game, you could be bullish here. I, we would be bullish here extremely bullish here. Yeah, you see this here, right? 
Okay, that's them going all in, right? Okay, and that's bearish because when they sell, it can weigh on the indices, right? They, they sell every rally and that's a lot of money, okay? So now they get down here and like late 2018, they got down to like here because they got aggressively short and that was a bottom, All right? So that's, that's what, you know, one of the two have to give here, right? You get it, something breaks, something goes boom and hedge funds take the needle and go short, All right? Then that's likely going to be the bottom once that runs its course. But everything is exactly like this looks like right now. You know, and you wonder, well, what are, what are hedge funds? They don't own anything. No, it's not that they don't own anything. What they own is their long energy stocks, short tech stocks, right? So net, they're hedged. You understand? And like SPX, right? They are short stocks and long spy as a hedge. You understand? So they got both sides there. They got both sides. So that, it's got to, something's got to give. Something's got to give. You know, and we got to wait it out. We got to wait it out. Um, but like I said, there's, there's enough right now with what we have in front of us to make the case that this should hold for the time being. You know what I mean? This should hold and buyers should show up into selling. You know, how bullish is that? Again, to each their own, right? To some of us, we may not, like, I, I don't mind that because I know, you know, I can look for opportunities off weakness and sell rips, right? Because like, look here, that wasn't the case. Here, there was just no buying, right? You heard the term, a buyer strike, no buyers. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no doubt. For day trading purposes, like for example, this low, you're not going to see it intraday. You know what I mean? You're not going to see it intraday. So what you got to what you got to do intraday, you know, again, it's, it depends what you're using. Me personally, like I like setups like today. You know what I mean? Yeah, trade that, That's what I'm saying. There's there's a lot of people that like this environment. If you here's the thing, right? Swing trading is where the big money is made. You can make big money position trading, okay? But when you get into this environment, if you can really be selective exactly and only play certain things like that, they, you know, people enjoy day trading. You make some money, you know, it adds up, but it's more of a grind. You know what I mean? It's more of a grind. But again, I... I'm not saying, you know, for me, like I'm really, I get really selective um, in this, in these environments, you know, especially when the flow sucks. Cause if there's no flow, I'm not playing anything, you know? So that it allows me to be more selective, but, but right now we don't have a choice. That's all we got. You understand? That's all we got. That's all we got. You know what's funny, Tanner? I listen, and that's the point I made uh, on a couple of Sunday webinars. To people who play commodities this year, this is a bull, full fledged bull market. You know what I mean? And that's the problem. People get fixated on these old names. And I'm telling you, that can be a major, major issue. You know, that's why, like right now, even though I'm not seeing anything new. I, I keep reminding myself, individual names, pay attention to individual names. You know what I mean? So if there's new money coming into different sector, a new sector of the market, I want to be able to pick up on it. If you're staring at Amazon off the split and Shopify and wondering why these things can't rally to new highs, you miss all that. And 
that's what happened in 2000. That's exactly what happened in the 2000 bubble. Everybody continuously was trying to find the bottom. Does it sound familiar? Did we bottom? Can we buy tech? Did it bottom? And they missed out on a whole other part of the market that was in a bull market, like Tenor is saying. You know what I mean? Like Tenor is saying. And listen, I, I'm the first to admit, I didn't take advantage of the, the energy trade. I was so gun shy for energy, you can't get any more gun shy because of what it did to me over the years. You know, but that's not going to stop me from, you know, keeping my eyes open to what sectors may be next and, and focus on Apple and Amazon, you know. So you just, you just, you, you got to keep, this is the part of the game, you got to keep reminding yourself of these things, you know, you, you can't have a bias and you got to stay open minded. You know, but just common sense right now, everybody's looking for a bottom in the same things. It usually doesn't bottom. The bottoms come when no one is looking for it. You know what I mean? No one is thinking about it. No one's looking for it because they don't want it. Not when everyone's looking for a bottom, right? Capitulation. We need capitulation. We were talking about it. We need capitulation. What was the chances we get capitulation when we're all looking for capitulation? You know, this market, I told you guys, right now, the way it looks, and I'll leave it on this note because I got to run. This is what it looks like to me, what we're in. The hockey stick, okay? The hockey stick. Where you get the down move and eventually nobody has anything left to sell. Everybody is thinking we got lower to go. You know what I mean? The other half is looking for where the bottom is and you get the hockey stick that the Rangers are going to use to kick the shit out of the lightning. <laughs> yeah. So again, that's what it looks like now, but that, that can, this game, things change. You know what I mean? Snap of a finger. So you just can't have a bias. You got to stay patient and keep your eyes open. You too, T. Everybody. Sorry, I got to cut it short. Uh, yeah, exactly. We went nowhere right now. Good point, Sil. We're living through it right now. All right, I, I got to bounce here, um, but I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, mañana trabajo. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>